Hello, good evening. I'm uh, Tom, I work at Q42, and I want to talk about uh, reactive user interfaces, which is a nice follow-up on the previous talk, as well as uh, last month at Cocoa Heads, uh, Thomas talked about uh, reactive programming, and this is also sort of a follow-up to that. Um, at Q42, we've been playing around a lot with how to build reactive user interfaces. Um, we've tried a couple of different approaches, and I just want to talk you through those, and then you can make your own decision about uh, which one you like best. Um, so, the simplest explanation, I think, about what is reactive is it's the opposite, uh, opposite of interactive. Uh, interactive is when you're uh, pressing a button and something happens, you're interacting with your, uh, with your UI. Reactive is uh, the UI updates on its own because something else happens. Um, and for that I have a running example. Um, where is it? Here it is, yes. So I have uh, an app I built, uh, uh, and I have beacons, iBeacons. So it shows you uh, which beacons is closest by, and it's, this is in aluminum foil. And I can change them. Now the yellow one's close by, and now the red one's close by. So that uh, works, and I have to put it in aluminum foil <laughs> <laughs> to keep it from moving. Yeah, the blue one's very easy. The bet <laughs> it's broken, the battery is dead, I think. Uh, it doesn't work, so. <laughs> and I found that out after I put all the blue stickies on it, so. Uh, uh, a couple of uh, features of this app. Uh, one, it uh, changes uh, which beacon uh, is there. Um, if I have my Bluetooth disabled, it uh, says uh, turn your Bluetooth back on. Uh, which is also an interactive message, because if I turn it back on, uh, the message goes away. And uh, finally, you can see it has these fancy animations. Yep. Uh, let's put it back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and when I open the screen, the animation doesn't happen, it just says the, the, red, uh, the red one's there. Um, so the, the state of which one's there is maintained and it doesn't trigger the animation when the app initially starts, uh, starts up, this, uh, this view controller starts up. Um, so those are the features I want to have in this app. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, the app. So these are, are a couple of aspects when building reactive UIs uh, you want to take into account. Um, very often you want to access the current state uh, synchronously, so not have it be a callback but know it immediately. For example, the immediately show the red one. Um, of course, respond to change, state changes. When something changes, you need to update the UI. Um, UIs also don't terminate, uh, as in you can close the screen, but if you don't close the screen, the UI stays on screen. Uh, with a reactive uh, observable stream, those have a, a stream of uh, values, and then they terminate with a, either a, a closed or a, a, a error. But UIs don't do that. If I, if I turn off my Bluetooth on my device, uh, it shows an error, but then if I turn the Bluetooth back on, it continues updating again. So it doesn't terminate as long as the UI is on screen, it should stay alive. Um, very often you want to multicast information, that is, uh, you have some piece of information like uh, which beacon is closest by, and multiple people are interested in that, so it needs to be, that information needs to be sent to multiple people uh, at the same time. Um, UI, of course, has to be updated on the main thread, and you have to do memory management, as in not accidentally create retain cycles. Uh, so yeah, this is the app I built, uh, uh, the initial version. I had two services. The Bluetooth service uh, simply says whether the, the current state of the Bluetooth um, manager, if it's powered on or not. And the beacon service uses uh, a core location to say which beacon is closest by. Uh, and then the view controller has uh, all the view stuff, and I just 
threw that all in together and then tried to clean it up afterwards. Um, so yeah, these lines, uh, these are direct connections. The view controller can directly ask questions of the Bluetooth server uh, and the beacon service. Um, but the important part is, of course, the callbacks. It needs to be notified when something happens. And these need to be loosely coupled, as in the beacon service uh, shouldn't directly know of the type of the view controller. You want to have that be loosely coupled. Um, so there are different approaches to do that. Um, using delegates, this is what, uh, if you've uh, ever done anything with uh, iOS programming, you've seen a delegate. Um, callback handlers are very easy. You can create a, 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 a block, a closure, and set it somewhere. Uh, observable streams using, for example, uh, Rx. Or uh, reactive variables, which is, uh, and then in particular, the binding, bindable library, which is a library we are working on uh, at Q42. It's still a work in progress, but it um, tries to uh, do everything we need for reactive UIs. Uh, two other approaches I uh, thought of earlier today are Notification Center and KVO. Notification Center isn't really uh, an architecture as in more, it's just shouting in the wild, something <laughs> happens, and then, <laughs> yeah, I've never used that for something like, uh, like building UIs. And KVO, I've never really used, uh, that's key uh, value observation, um, because it was all uh, uh, stringly typed, it's sending strings around, and, um, that's in Swift not very nice, except now in Swift 4, uh, they've ma made it ba better and I haven't used that yet. So uh, maybe that's uh, very good now, I hope so. <laughs> um, okay, so the different approaches. I want to talk to the, through the five different ways of, uh, of doing that and then show you uh, the code for those. The first approach is doing everything in the view controller. Um, so this is my beacon service. Uh, it has a uh, delegate, uh, a dedicated delegate, uh, which is a protocol, um, and one member, uh, or one data member. This is the nearest beacon, uh, which is optional, because a beacon can be not available. It can be no beacons or one beacon. Um, and any time the beacon changes, the beacon service will say to its delegate, the nearest uh, changed. And then whoever is delegate can look at the nearest what it is now. Uh, so that's the delegate pattern. That's the one uh, Apple uses a lot. Um, they often also pass in the beacon uh, service over there. So that's uh, something I didn't do, but could just as well do. Um, this is a different approach using a handler. So that's the way the Bluetooth service is implemented. The Bluetooth serv service has the current state of the Bluetooth manager. Uh, as again a property which you can uh, inspect and um, a handler which you can set yourself which is a, uh, a, a function which gets called when the state changes so that's uh, and it gets called with the new state so this is very easy um, you can just set the handler and then you get called back uh, anytime something changes and this is uh, the view controller as I implemented it. Uh, it has the two services, uh, and then in the view that load, it does all the setup. It registers itself as the delegate to the beacon service. Uh, it sets the handler on the uh, uh, Bluetooth service, and then when the Bluetooth state changes, it updates the UI, uh, and when the nearest beacon changes, it uh, does an animation and updates the um, uh, uh, the label, the text label. Uh, so the UI is simply looking, uh, the Bluetooth warning is simply looking if the state is not powered on and then it shows it. Uh, as in, then the alpha is one, otherwise it's zero, so it's completely uh, transparent. Uh, the nearest label up shows the text, uh, the description of the beacon, or if there's no beacon, a dash. Uh, and that's really all there, all there is to this simple implementation. Um, so yeah, so that's the architecture, uh, as you can talk about an architecture. Um, that's this. So the pros of that approach is there's not much code. Um, it's simple to look at if you, if you, if you uh, uh, saw it here. Um, 
you can in the view controller directly access the current value of all the services so you can immediately show it if you need to show uh, the current value um, you get callbacks when the values changes change and then you can do animations i didn't show the animation in the code but you can do animations uh, the cons are there's no multicasting as in if some more people are interested in in the in the state there's no multicasting there's only one delegate and this approach leads to a massive view controller. Um, the code becomes unmaintainable over time if you just stuff everything you have inside uh, of a view controller. So that's why there are uh, a lot of different uh, architectures. Uh, you have Viper and uh, MVVM and a lot of stuff. And they all sort of are like this, as in there's something in between that is that deals with uh, between the services and the view controller crawler. Um, the <coughs> services are a given, you can't really change those as in if you're using core location you have to use core location uh, with delegates and, and the core location um, API. If you're using a view controller you have to subclass a UI view controller, uh, you can't really get around that. Um, but all the connecting of things you can do inside of a view model or an interactor in Viper or uh, any or a presenter or any of these patterns. So, um, trying that approach. Now this is the, uh, a new view model. It has its own delegate, um, which has two methods: uh, did change nearest beacon and uh, did change uh, show Bluetooth warning. Um, and because Apple had those uh, animated flags, I also included them, the, the way you can say whether uh, the change should be animated or not. Uh, then the view model itself retains references, references to the beacon service and the Bluetooth service, which are injected via some way uh, in the initializer. And it has the properties uh, nearest beacon and show Bluetooth warning and a weak delegate. So anyone who's interested in uh, the current state can look at uh, the uh, two properties and if you're interested in changes to the state you can uh, implement the view model delegate and set uh, yourself as, uh, as the delegate to this view model. Uh, yeah, this is the rest of the implementation of the view model. Um, it, in the initializer, it sets its initial state for the nearest beacon from whatever the service has, as well as the uh, initial state for the um, Bluetooth warning. Um, it registers itself to the services with the, with the state handler and the uh, delegates. Uh, and then these are the implementations. The function change, uh, Bluetooth state changed um, changes the value of the Boolean. Uh, and then notifies the delegates that the state changed and the implementation for the beacon service delegate when the nearest beacon changes uh, updates the its local nearest beacon uh, property and then again tells the delegate if there is one um, that the beacon changed and then the view controller can implement that delegate and implement the view model it's uh, now instead of the two services it had before has the uh, reference to the view model. Uh, in the uh, view did load, it sets, sets itself as the delegate to the view model. Uh, and then also sets up the initial state. So the, uh, the label, text label has to be set up and the uh, uh, alpha value of the uh, Bluetooth warning uh, has to be set up to the initial state. And then whenever the delegate get called, it, it updates the UI. So when the nearest beacon changes, it animates and it changes the text label. Uh, and when the um, Bluetooth warning changes, it looks at the current state of the view model and changes the alpha uh, of the warning. So now the architecture has grown to this. Uh, all the callback stuff happens uh, from the view model delegate. So now the view model um, tells its delegates that something changed and the view controller implements the delegate. Um, one big downside I have with this is that uh, 
previously, if you uh, are building an app and you want to add an extra screen, you just add a new view controller. And now you have to add three different new types anytime you want to add a new screen. So there's really a, a lot of stuff um, to do, which is the, one of the main things I dislike about this is having to do all the bookkeeping whenever you simply want to add a new screen. Um, so yeah, the pros of this approach is uh, you can directly access the current value via the view model. Um, uh, you get callbacks uh, via the delegate that something changed. You can do animations using the Boolean. And uh, memory management is there because the delegate is uh, weak. That means the, uh, it, you won't have a retain cycle. Um, the cons of this, uh, the first one sort of a con, as in you have to implement all the functions. Uh, you can't, if you're only interested in one of the values, you still have to implement at least an empty version of the function uh, for the other value uh, when it changes. Uh, there's still no multicasting, and as I said, uh, there you have to add a, a, a view model as well as a view model delegate, so an extra type. So a different approach, using handlers, which is also something we tried a lot. Instead of having to create a delegate all the time, create handlers. Um, <coughs> so at the top are the two handlers, a, a nearest uh, beacon handler, which is a function that takes the uh, optional beacon uh, and returns voids, which is an optional function. So you can either set it or not set it. Um, and when you set it in the did set, uh, it, and it, it calls you back with the, with the current states of the, be of the beacon. Um, so that way you don't have to manually inspect what the current state is, where you just set it and you immediately get a callback. Uh, same goes for the show Bluetooth warning handler, which gets a Boolean, whether you need to show the Bluetooth or not. And the rest of the uh, view model hasn't really changed. Instead of now calling the delegates, it, uh, it calls the two uh, optional handlers if they exist. The view controller implementation of this, we no longer have to implement the delegates. We can now simply set the two handlers. Uh, so these functions existed before, but where the, uh, the delegate implementation, now we set the handlers directly, uh, uh, and they get called back immediately in the, uh, with the current value. One thing that happens with this is a, uh, uh, retain cycle. Uh, this is the actual way you have to do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because it, it, uh, the, um, in this way, um, what it says here is self dot ditch change uh, Bluetooth uh, warning. Um, so here the view controller has a reference to the view model and when you're setting this, you have the view model have a direct reference to the uh, uh, view controllers and I have your retain cycle and both stay in memory forever. So this is the way you have to do this. Uh, and I also had this bug before in all the other examples where I used the handler. Uh, so yeah. So this is a, a, a big downside. It's easy to forget to do this. And it looks so nice before, very clean. <laughs> um, yeah, so now this is the architecture. Um, you still go through the handler, uh, you st it's still the view model that calls the handlers and then the handlers are implemented by the view controller. Um, but th this is not an extra type, these are just properties that, uh, that exist on the view model. So the pros of this approach is uh, <coughs> no extra type, which I like, a lot less code. Um, you're not required to listen to all the changes for all the uh, properties, you only the ones you're interested in. Um, and in this way, with the calling, immediately calling with current value, there's no separate code for having to deal with the current value and future values. It's all the same uh, flow of code. So there's uh, less room for error where you have something else for the initial version and something uh, and other code for the uh, second versions. Um, the cons of this approach, there is no um, uh, uh, direct access to the current value on the, uh, of, the, of uh, one of the fields. Um, you always have to go through the uh, callbacks. 
Um, the way I implemented it, there's no support for animations. Um, because you don't know if you need to animate. You can either animate all the time or uh, none of the time. But you cannot decide. Um, an easy fix would be to add an extra Boolean argument to each of the uh, handlers. So you, then you can choose. Um, something we, we did a lot is uh, instead of setting the handlers in the uh, view that loads, set them in the initializer. And then the view hasn't been loaded yet. And then you get callbacks immediately. And then you get a implicitly unwrapped optional from some label and then your app crashes. Uh, so you need to be careful that it, it calls you back when it calls you back. Uh, yeah, it's easy to get a retain cycle this way and again no multicasting. So, observables, Rx observables. We tried that as well. Uh, so this is using Rx Swift. Um, now the view model has been updated to use uh, two, uh, have two subjects, uh, nearest beacon subject, which is a behavior subject, which is something from RX Swift, uh, and they show Bluetooth warning subject. Um, RX has a lot of different operators and types and subjects and observables, and behavior subject is one of those. Uh, behavior subject has the uh, behavior. Uh, that if you subscribe to it, you immediately get uh, called back um, with the first, uh, the current value. So it retains the current value, and then whenever the value changes in the future, you get called back uh, again. Uh, for that reason, the behavior subject has to have a argument, uh, the current value, uh, when it's created, so that when someone subscribes, it can at least give that one back uh, if no newer newer value has uh, 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 is there. Uh, and the rest of the implementation is, again, similar to before. Uh, I have now properly used the weak uh, reference for the uh, handler. Uh, and whenever the state changes, we now send the next uh, event to the, uh, to the subjects. Um, one downside of this is that the way this is implemented is the subjects are public. Uh, and now anyone who has a reference to the view model can also send a on next. Uh, which is not what I want, because that's that someone else can start sending uh, beacons or uh, show Bluetooth warnings, um, because they're public. Uh, that's not something uh, we want. Um, to get around that, you need to have a, uh, instead of exposing the, the, the subject itself, you need to expose it as an observable. So now, so the subjects are private, and there is a, a public observable to which you can subscribe uh, to get the data. I think you can still cast it to a uh, uh, subject, but you shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also an operator to, to get just back a real observable, uh, not a, uh, something you can't cast, I think. Um, but yeah, now it's a bit more code again. But at least this, this version is safe. You no know, one can accidentally start sending uh, beacons. Um, this is the implementation of the view controller, at least a very small part of it. Um, the view controller has a reference to the uh, view model again. It now needs a dispose back, which is something from RX Swift uh, that's needed for memory management. And then um, in the uh, uh, view load, we're subscribing to the uh, show uh, Bluetooth warning observable with uh, uh, calling this function, which does all the work. Um, and we're also subscribing on the main thread, which is a nice feature of uh, RX Swift, where you can choose which uh, thread scheduler you need. And uh, all this UI stuff needs to be on the main thread. And before I ignored that, um, but that could, <laughs> there could have been an error if, if one of the, the, either the Bluetooth or the beacon servers start calling on the wrong queue, um, th uh, then I would have gotten a crash before. Um, so I had, to, yeah, needed to fix that anyway. So this is very nice from uh, RX Swift. You can just observe on the, on the correct uh, thread queue. Um, yeah, and then whenever uh, a Bluetooth warning happens, we um, change the uh, the UI, and the subscribe returns a uh, subscription, which we have to put inside of the dispose back to do memory management whenever the. Uh, view controller goes off screen, the dispose back uh, 
the view controller is de-initialize the, uh, that takes with it the dispose back and that removes all the uh, subscriptions. So that's something you have to do uh, because it, there's no weak references here. Um, one thing that's here is this always goes animated and we want the initial version to not be animated. Um, but again, Rx has a lot of uh, stuff for that, so we can do it like this. Uh, the subscribe twice, in the initial subscription only uh, look at the first value, take one, which only uh, listens to the very first uh, uh, event and then stops listening. So the first event we uh, unanimatedly show the current state of the Bluetooth warning and because it was a uh, behavior subject it will immediately uh, give a first event. And then uh, after that um, we subscribe animated uh, by skipping the first value. So this is something you can do with uh, Rx. It's not something I had to build, it's just stuff you get for free. So um, now this is the approach. Again, the view model calls the observables and the observables uh, pass the value through the view controller. Um, there is separate types, as in the behavior subject and the observables, th but those are not stuff I have to create, so uh, I like that. It's just some library I import. So that's not really work for me. For me, it's just no, no extra types I have to build whenever I need to build a new view controller. Again, pros and cons. Uh, no extra type, very nice. You don't have to observe all the values, only the ones you're interested in. Uh, memory management is something that's built in with the dispose back and stuff. You, there's things for that. Now we finally have multicasting. You can subscribe multiple times uh, uh, as uh, long as you like and you pass the observable to someone else which can also listen. You get the full power of Rx with all the operators and stuff. Um, you don't have serial access to the current value. You can subscribe and then immediately be called back but you can't directly get the current value and it's very verbose and there's a high learning curve to Rx because there's a lot of stuff in there and if you don't need all the features then it's uh, maybe too much stuff although if you do need all the features then it's very nice so the bindable library um, which is a library we're working on and it's not really complete we're using it in some apps uh, that are under development um, yeah, but again, it's something we're working on. Uh, so what does it do? It has first class reactive variables. So direct precisely for this, uh, 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 what we need here. Uh, you can directly access the current value, which is very nice. Uh, subscribe for future values. It has built-in support for animated because um, we were looking at it and using it and it turns out that every time Mostly the only thing we're interested in when we get an event is, is it animated or not? We have the value and then the one extra thing we need to know if, if it's animated or not. Um, it by default just calls back every, well, everything on the main thread uh, because it's built for doing UI, so why not? Um, and it uh, uh, has mem memory management stuff. Um, yeah, so this is... Uh, what uh, the main thing looks like, a, a variable of a certain type. Um, it has one property called value, which you can directly access and you get the current value of the variable. You can subscribe by passing in a handler uh, to get callbacks uh, on future values. Um, the handler gets called whenever the value changes. And the one function I added um, from Rx and other libraries is the map function um, to change the type. Uh, there's no things like filtering or flap mapping or any of these operators, uh, but mapping is very useful because very often you, uh, you need to change something of a type. Um, uh, a great example is if you have an integer, a variable integer uh, that you're using internally and want to show it on the screen, uh, use it as a, uh, in a label, it needs to be of, the type of a string type. So you need to change an int to a string. So map is the only operator that's there um, to change the type of the variable. And um, 
again, as you, when you subscribe, you get called back with a variable event, uh, which is this type. Variable event is a simple struct that has the old value, uh, the current value, and whether uh, the uh, change needs to be animated or not. Um, yeah, so it's really animated, it's built in, because that's the one we, we use a lot. Uh, and also, it turns out that the old val value is very useful to have, and the library had it internal anyway. Um, so then you can do animations from the old value to the new value without having to retain that yourself. Um, and when you subscribe, you get, call, uh, get back a subscription, which you can uh, store somewhere and unsubscribe if you're no longer interested in uh, being called back when something changes. So this is the way you can use it. You have some variable, which is a variable int. And you can print its current value by simply using the dot value. Or you can subscribe and uh, print any future values. <coughs> and the, uh, yeah, so the, it gets called back whenever something changes. So in UI, you can use it like this. Uh, uh, store the current value in, the, in, a, in, a, in a text property of a label. Um, or first map it to a, a string uh, whenever the variable changes uh, and then uh, yeah, store the new string in the, in the label. This is a variable source, so the previous is was just the data we get uh, to, to observe some value. Um, if we want to create something, we need something like the behavior subject from Rx. Uh, and that's, that is what this is. This is the source of a, a variable. You can uh, create it or initialize it with a current value um, uh, and a uh, dispatch queue. Um, I've never used it with something other than main, but uh, you can use it on a, another queue if you want to. Um, you can get the variable, which is the thing that, uh, that reports all the changes, and then uh, you can give the variable to someone who's interested in ch these changes. And then there's a value property which you can either get or set. So this, when you have uh, this source, you can change the value by setting, uh, setting it. And then anyone who's uh, subscribed to the variable can get uh, called back. And also there's the version which has the animated flag. So this mirrors Apple's uh, APIs of uh, set value with an animated flag. Uh, and again, this is how you can use it. If you're creating a new source, uh, you have to initialize it with some initial value so that there at least is a first value. You can get the uh, variable that belongs to it by asking for it and then passing it to someone else who's interested in subscribing to future values. Uh, and then you can start changing it. So you can simply set the value to something else. Uh, because it's Swift, you can also set it like this, change it uh, uh, from three to five by uh, doing a plus equals. Uh, or you can change it to something else, animate it. Uh, and now whoever listens to it can do an animation. Uh, this is also really nice um, if you have a variable of a uh, string array, you can simply call the sort method on it and then it changes to uh, be sorted. Uh, that's just how Swift works. So that's now you, uh, now you have a, uh, uh, if someone subscribed to it before, it got a, a callback that it's changed. Uh, this one's really nice. Um, I create a new uh, reversed version of the array and then set it animated. So if you're displaying this, for example, in a UI table view, and then you get a uh, callback that you need to animate the changes. Uh, you can look at the old value, uh, look at the new value, do a diff between those, and then do uh, an animated table view where all the rows are uh, animating. So, using this library for the example we have, um, now this starts to be a lot of code again. It, we now need to have a source. Uh, so we have a uh, nearest beacon source and a Bluetooth warning source um, which are private so no one else can start changing the, the, the variable sources and a, uh, a public 
variable, which are the variables from the sources, which people can listen to. And the sources have to be created with the initial versions. Uh, and then uh, here's the memory leak again. Um, and then whenever something changes, uh, we call set value animated so that the user can an animate uh, the updates. And this is the view controller for just the Bluetooth warning. Uh, for the initial stage, we simply look up the current value and set it to whatever it needs to be. So when the uh, thing go comes on screen, it's already set to the current, the correct value. Uh, and we subscribe uh, and uh, ch uh, change the UI whenever something uh, uh, changes. Um, now, this is not animated, but we can look at the animated flag. So if it says the event needs to be animated, we can uh, do the transition animated. So this is a... Um, uh, and the subscription has to be retained, so you can unsubscribe if you're no longer interested uh, in it. And I use the same approach as uh, RX Swift, where we have a dispose bag. Um, as an experiment, I put the dispose bag on a... Um, uh, uh, automatically as an extension property on NS object. So any NS object has a uh, dispose bag, uh, which is useful. Uh, <laughs> it's in a sub spec of the Coco spec, so you don't have to use that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I like it. And now, now I don't have to create a dispose bag for everything. Any object has a dispose bag, and as long as you retain the object, it retains the dispose bag. And when you uh, no longer use the object, all everything that uh, it is listening to and subscribes. Um, yeah, this is another example where the title from the view model is set to the current, uh, uh, the text of the, the label is set to the current uh, title. Uh, and when the um, uh, title changes, the text gets updated of the label. Uh, this is a very common pattern. Uh, um, that, uh, that you see a lot when you set it to the initial state and then wait for changes and update a, a thing. Um, so now we, with Swift 4 we can create an extension method uh, on um, NS object again um, to use uh, a Swift 4 key path. So this is a reference to the text property of the uh, UI label um, using a Swift 4 key path. Um, so now whenever, uh, and this bind function is an extension method, so whenever uh, this title changes, uh, the text property of this type label will be updated. So it initially sets it and then uh, listens to future values, and uh, it attaches itself to the dispose bag of this label. So as long as this label exists, um, it keeps updating uh, based on the uh, model title. And this is very nice, we can do that for a lot of stuff, for background colors and beacons. So you can, now you can create properties. Uh, if you have a did set method, those will be called whenever uh, these, uh, um, this uh, var bindable variable changes, it updates from uh, self, the view controller, this, prop uh, this uh, variable property. So this is really nice uh, Swift 4. Uh, strongly typed key path. Um, let's see, yeah, okay, so again, same architecture, but now using reactive variables, and again, these are from a library, so not something I have to create uh, every time I create a new view model type. Um, so the pros, no extra uh, delegate or uh, something. Uh, still get uh, concurrent access to the current value. Uh, not all properties are required. You can only listen to the ones you're interested in. It's safe with the public-private so that nobody else uh, can change a variable except the person who's interested in it, or who, who retains a reference to the source. Uh, it has multicasting. The downsides, it's best for both, especially with the public-private. You have to, to create two uh, properties whenever you have to uh, create a new uh, variable, a private source and a public variable. 
and it's an, a, an extra library, as in library it's not really finished yet. Uh, but it's something extra uh, you have to learn and include. Uh, if you're already using something like Rx, then maybe it's, it's too much to have something specifically for uh, UIs. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Discuss. Any questions? Yes. Did you use Rx uh, for this library? No, it's it's uh, custom built, but it's small. So I did look at the source code from Rx. Yeah. You showed <coughs> the uh, uh, callbacks, like the callback properties that you assign a function, and then you have the retain uh, problem. You need to have a weak cell. Can't you like uh, have the properties itself be weak, and then they have a weak reference to the function? Uh, mm, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if it's uh, it, if it's weak. It needs to be a class type, I think, not a reference yeah, type. Uh, yeah, and a closure is is a reference type, but not a class, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that won't work. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> Is it something I should look at? Uh, you might be interested. Yeah. But, uh, but it's I'm going from overboard. It's Mac OS. Yeah, and it's from bef <laughs> that's before uh, before Swift four, right? So uh, it's untyped probably. It's in a language called Objective C. Uh, I don't know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the yes. Yeah, it's much. Can you maybe go back one? So you mentioned something about the dispose bag of the label. I didn't, didn't quite get that actually. Yeah, so this subscription, and uh, this function needs to be called whenever uh, this changes, but you want to be able to stop listening to have it be called. So um, this subscription uh, is retained by this bag, which is a property of this view controller. Uh, ah, okay, yeah. By being an extension method, yeah. Ah, okay, yeah, it's because you mentioned the dispose bag on the next slide, and then I was a bit Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. My question is pretty close to yours uh, <coughs> about the dispose bag. Can you explain how did you uh, implement the dispose bag for the NS object? Is it related? Yeah, using the Objective C uh, extension, well, whatever they're called. Associated, Associated uh, object. objects. Objective. Yeah, of yeah. Objective C runtime. Uh, yes, it's lazy. Yeah, the first time you ask for it, it gets created, and then it's retained as long as the object exists. Or you can even uh, overwrite the dispose back with a new dispose back, and that clears out all the previous subscriptions. What, what are the methods? I, I don't know if this is What are the methods that are on dispose back? Uh, I think only add add subscription. Ah. So you can add subscriptions to it, and, and uh, they get disposed. Yes. So for, for all the people, it's more like a release pool, right? I'm not. I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. This is some objective C thingy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who does the release pool? Is the auto yeah. auto release pool is the only one I have heard of. Yeah. Ah, yeah. It's for, for doing stuff with loops in in, in no, C no, and it, stuff. It was yeah. magical touch of wonder, like where yeah. it just releases references. You can still use them in Swift. Okay, let's continue talking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.